So guys, I am learning that my camera battery shuts down uh, right at an hour, so uh, I'm going to have to rethink how I do this, uh, but anyway, uh, I'm just going to finish up chapter one in this video, and from here on out, what I'm going to do is read uh, five pages at a time, so uh, let's back up. Okay, so we're going to back up because I'm not 100% sure where we broke off, but I think where we broke off, we were in the town of Pilcapata, Peru, uh, on our final destination on my first day uh, heading uh, into the Peruvian Amazon. So we're going to pick up where we got cut off. Our captain gave the requisite three-minute warning to after a last-minute requisite after last-minute requisite skirmishes over seating and luggage arrangements, we lurched off into the jungle. Despite the steady drubbing I was getting from the nursing baby beside me, I managed to enjoy the beautiful six-mile slog through the tunnel of jungle growth as we slipped and slid our way to Atalaya. We rolled into the remote riverside village with just enough daylight left for me to track down my $5 hotel room for the night, complete with private bath and actual glass in the window. Across the front of the hotel, a decapitated Santa Claus guided what appeared to be a couple of burrows or perhaps Great Danes from the tattered remains of his sleigh, tacked to the front of the building in four-inch high faded glittery green letters was the message, Each day is our gift from God, or something to that effect. Lording over this rambling guest house, was the wild-eyed, long-haired, bearded, and manic Ernesto, the 60-year-old brother of Dante, my eco-warrior amigo from Cusco who owned the remote jungle lodge upstream where I planned to spend three days with his Stone Age Indian caretaker. Er Ernesto had been hiding out, stranded, in the remote jungle town for a decade, an isolation that had resulted in his overbearing habit of greeting every tourist with the effusiveness of Dennis Hopper's photographer character in Apocalypse Now. His M.O. of being host was to assault me with barrage after barrage of machine gun fire Spanish, hardly one word of which I could decipher, then slap me on the back and hoop with laughter at his own cleverness. The essential theme of his monologue, I believe, was that the only way I was going to be able to find a boat out of town with my available cash would be to build a Huck Finn raft out of logs and paddle my own way down river. His advice to me was to haul my honky ass back to Cusco on the same $9 bus I had just come in on, hit the ATM, and take the goddamn 40 minute flight to Manu like every other gringo with half a brain. To head deeper into the jungle on my limited funds would be nothing short of committing gringo suicide. Not caring to hear Ernesto's negative comments about my great adventure, I extricated myself from his clutches 
and set off into the darkness in search of sustenance, I was soon rewarded by a delicious, overflowing plate of chicken and rice, a 55-gallon drum of ice-cold cerveza, the only size available, to wash it down with, and double chocolate Oreos for dessert. Plug for Oreos, they contain no palm oil. Price for dinner, about three bucks. My belly full of food and my head full of 55 gallons of beer, I sauntered down to the banks of the Rio Madre de Dios, the Mother of God River, which was to be my home in one location or another for the next two months. I leaned back against a tree and soaked in my first vista of Amazonian stars. Within minutes, the lullaby of thousands of frogs and crickets was sending me to La La Land. I headed back to my hotel and collapsed into bed. No sooner had I drifted off into peaceful slumber to a background chorus of frog song than I was jolted awake by a scratchy, screaming rendition of There's Gonna Be a Heartache Tonight by the Eagles blaring out of some Peruvian jungle watering hole, no doubt filling up with dozens of drunk Indians ready to whoop it up till dawn on Friday night. More like there's gonna be a headache tomorrow, I cursed to myself as I fumbled around for my earplugs. No use. Welcome to the Hotel California, the boom box from hell swapped into the night as I tried in vain to find some peace and quiet in the Hotel Atalaya. Oh, what I would have given at that moment for some steely knives to stab that fucking boom box. I flung back the sheets, stuffed myself back into my sweat-stained clothing, and stumbled through the dark and slow lane of Atalaya's deserted Main Street, gearing up for my first showdown in the Amazon jungle. As I followed the unbearable screeching to its source, the eagles were ranting about a couple of coke-snorting L.A. beautiful people being stuck in their empty lives in the fast lane. As pissed off as I was, I could not help but smiling at the absurd irony of that awful song on the edge of the Amazon rainforest. The cacophony wasn't coming from a bar, but from a tin-roofed, windowless hovel. I banged on the door, but of course nobody inside could hear me over the ear-splitting noise. I knocked harder, and the door fell open to reveal the resplendent image of a lone young Amazon Indian warrior dressed only in a loose-fitting pair of black paratrooper pants and a jaguar tooth necklace, his long black hair brushed back from his high cheekbones and almond eyes. From the waist up, the young buck could have been the cover photo of Tarzan Fantasy Magazine. Without the slightest trace of surprise or concern, he gazed almost boredly at the crazy gringo who had just bashed in his front door. Amigo, por favor, I shouted as politely as I could above the racket. I made a motion that I was trying to sleep. He snarled something back at me, but he least he turned the shit down. Not off, but down enough to where my earplugs were able to drown it out. It had been one hell of a wild day, but nothing, I hoped, compared to the next day when I would begin my three-day date with a real Amazon Indian just barely 
out of the Stone Age. And uh, that wraps up chapter one of Peruvian Plunge. And uh, as I say, I think we learned a valuable lesson to uh, read about five pages at a time. So I hope you're prepared for this, Sancho Bonzo, because there's a lot more where this came from. Guys, I'm going to plow on ahead with this. Don't know how many chapters I'm going to make at any time. You want to go on lulu.com and just order Peruvian Plunge and read this yourself. Feel free. Bye, guys.